Hey everyone, it's December the 26th, it's Boxing Day here in Britain and uh, I just want to start off by saying I hope everybody had a great Christmas Day. So, what do I want to talk about in this video? One, my own personal computer, my daily driver if you will, and two, I've got some Hornby Railways bits and pieces to show you and update you on as well. So, as I'm here at the desk, I'm going to start with my computer. So, for a while, I've been wanting, wanting rather, to upgrade the processor in my computer because uh, there's a few games, one of which was Thief Simulator, that I've wanted to play for ages, ever since I saw a few popular gamers play it on YouTube. Um, but I lacked processor. It may have run up, but I don't think it would have been very um, comfortable to play. Because <laughs> um, I was only running an i3 dual-core four-thread processor. Not a bad processor. It ran really, really well in my system. I absolutely loved it. But it just lacked when it came to a couple of games. Most of the games that I wanted to play, I could play. It's just three, four... Something like that. I'm just looking at my desktop to see if I can see. BMNT Drive used to play, but it didn't like it. I might not have them installed, actually. I've only got Thief Simulator installed from the looks of it. Anyway. I've upgraded more than the processor which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, my little brother, last week, he swapped his motherboard with a Ryzen board that he bought on eBay as a bundle. Came with the processor and RAM and everything. Um, not something he actually intended to do, but he was just browsing eBay. Saw this on offer for a good price. Not a cheap price, but a good price. Put in an offer, and the offer was accepted, so... Um, so we did that last week for him, it was pretty much just a straight swap, and everything worked, so that was good. Um, but he offered his old board to me, which he'd actually recently upgraded the processor on. I can't remember what his previous one was, but it was nowhere near as good as the one he upgraded it to. Um, so I agreed, and yesterday I made the purchase only because he bought me a brand new power supply for my computer as well. He got it for me for, as a Christmas gift, so I've actually replaced the power supply. It's about 100 watts less, it's only a 600 watt supply, but it's working well enough. I don't really have anything that's going to be taxing on the system anyway. There's only three hard drives, and most of the time they're idling. Uh, one, two, three, four, five fans technically would have been six, but I had to remove one to get the new motherboard in. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, and the video card that's pretty much it, as well as the motherboard itself. <clears throat> so, well, I've got the um, DVD ROM drive plugged in, but again, that's mostly idling. But, uh, yeah, everything is good. So, I'll read the specs off. I've got them up on the screen at the minute of uh, what I am currently running. It's not going to be the best thing on the planet. It's not going to be, the you know, like a two or three, four grand custom build would um, perform. But it performs good enough for me. In fact, I do want to upgrade that video card at some point, but that's not important at the minute. What I want to play, I can play. <laughs> um, so, processor always comes up as default on CPU ID, so I'm going to read that off first. I am running an Intel Core i7 4820K at 3.70 gigahertz, and that is a quad core with eight threads. 
so it's a hyper threaded quad core. Um, that's what beam NG drive used to bitch at me about because my old one was just a dual core and it required a quad core to work. It worked on a dual core, but I couldn't. Some maps took absolutely ages to load if they'd load and. Um, I couldn't run multiple cars on a map because the um, FPS would just drop so badly it wasn't playable. Um, I'm going to check the specs of that game because I'm pretty certain the video card is fine for that. Anyway, that's the processor. The main board, um, Asus Tech Computer Inc. And the model is the Rampage 4 Extreme, and the BIOS is dated 5th 14, 2014. So 14th of Ju June? May, rather. I do know my dates. <laughs> um, but I know my brother had to update the BIOS on that, so that is the latest version of it. Um... He was having problems with his video card and this motherboard sort of working together and he had to update the BIOS to which uh, did actually fix it. Um, it's quite a nice motherboard. There is a number of features on there. There's a lot of bells and whistles I didn't think a motherboard could have. There's some dip switches. There's about three red buttons on there and I have no idea what they do and I don't want to press them. In case I mess something up, so I just figured it's better to leave them. Um, it's got like a diagnostic thingy up there. I'll show you that as well in a minute. The memory, because I've got the memory with the board as well, so I haven't even used my original memory. It is DDR3, of course, um, on a quad channel. 16 gigabytes is what's installed. Um, the DRAM frequency is 667 megahertz, and the graphics card hasn't changed. It's still my GTX 750Ti, which uh, is two gigabytes of GDDR5. So, not bad. It's doing what I need it to do for now. But like I said, wouldn't mind upgrading to something that's got perhaps four gigabytes on it. <clears throat> I can't remember what my brother's is, but it's a heck of a lot better than that one. <laughs> but to get it in, I might actually have to take a drive, a hard drive bay out. Like I actually have to take one of the fans off. There's a fan that you can mount on the hard drive bay to help cool those. Um, but I had to take that off. I don't think I really need it, because hard drives don't get used a great deal on this. Anyway. Should we take a peek see inside? Let me just get an extra light on. Turn you around. Nemo wants some food, but I'll do that when we go in the kitchen in a minute. So, there's the power supply. It is a thermal take smart RGB 600 watt. There's a button on the back of that so I can change the um, pattern down there and the colours and whatnot. Doesn't seem to be any other way to change it, just via the button on the back. Um, yeah, my old one, is that 700? Yeah. It's actually got 729 watts on the max output thing there, but basically a 700. Uh, dinky little fan there on it. There's my video card. Monster of a heat sink. I believe the RAM is Corsair branded, I can't quite see. Yes, it is Corsair branded, I can see it. I've got four sticks of that, four times four gig sticks. There's the diagnostic LED doodah up in the corner. There's also an illuminated start button. I have no idea what that is. There's a reset button. Um, this has actually got a BIOS reset button on the outside of this motherboard. It's actually on the I.O. plate, right up in that corner. Um, it's got a ROG connector. I can't remember what ROG stands for at the minute. <laughs> I thought I actually saw it spelled out on this board somewhere, but I might have hidden it with the video card. I know it's to do with gaming and um, Asus's own gaming thing. 
I won't probably ever use rock, I don't even know if it's still usable or still exists. But uh, anyway, um, one of the advantages with this is it's got actually got two, four, six, eight, eight, I think, SAR connectors. The red ones are six gigabytes a second, and the black ones are three. Um, so naturally, I've got my SSD on the um, red ones. But uh, one of the advantages with this is, this has two headers. There's a red one right there, right in the middle of the screen. For um, the front USB 3. So my front USB 3's are actually working. For once. For the first time since I've had this case. That's one of the reasons I actually wanted to um, change the motherboard more than just the processor. If this motherboard down here is actually going to work, so I've just noticed one of my... Open dim slot. It looks... Well, that looks like that is bent, but it's on there nice and securely, so yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that now. I've been playing American Truck Simulator. I haven't, I've got Euro Truck Simulator 2 installed as well, but I haven't played that one yet. Tr played Police Simulator a little bit. I've still got to get used to the controls and whatnot. It's Thief Simulator. It's actually a decent game, decent graphics. You just need a lot of patience, you just can't, you know, charge into a, a job on that game like you could on, like, Grand Theft Auto or something. You actually have to be patient. But anyway, here's the old board. Here's my old uh, Wind Power Plus power supply. About seven years I've actually used that. And it's been transplanted in at least three cases in that time. Um, the only thing is, that is the third fan on the back. Um, and on the top there is the third fan as well, which I replaced last week because the bearings went. Every time it's been the bearings, they haven't just stopped working, it's been bearing noise. Um, but I've used like used fans, which probably doesn't help with the lifespan to be honest. Probably why they haven't lasted as long as like a brand new one would. Or well, most likely why they haven't lasted as long as a brand new one would. But yeah, it's still, in my eyes, a good working power supply. It's got a lot of connectors on it and whatnot. Anyway. Yeah, this is my... It's also an Asus motherboard. Does anyone know if it's actually Asus or Asus? On a clue. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, there's a lot of um, unoccupied pads here. On this board, because... Uh, I did Google the model number, and of course it came up with other revisions of this board as well that had like these occupied. I even found one that had all four of these dim slot areas occupied. Only two of them are on this motherboard. Uh, I believe, if, I, if memory serves correctly, this can take 16 gigs max. This has actually currently got 12. That's really annoying me because I can see that dim slot is bent. That corner is bent over. But like I said, it's on there nice and securely, as long as it still works. I don't give a monkeys. Um, so yeah, my i3 is still installed on this. I never changed the heat sink. I was actually planning to put something better on it like that. But, you know, I was going to do all that when I upgraded the processor. But something better came along, so. And what we got? Six SATA connectors. There is no USB 3 header on this or anything. There ain't much in the way of... Uh, Bells and whistles on this quite a basic motherboard, in all honesty. But it, it did what I wanted it to do. I could game with it. It just lacked in processor power. That was the only issue. So, what am I going to do with it? That's where we need to go at the kitchen. So, turn that off. Turn those off. And while I'm in there, I'm going to put some food in Boss's dish. Otherwise, he's not going to leave us alone. So, there's a big clue there of what I'm going to do with the other motherboard. Just get that thing out of the way. Do I need a new di uh, tin for you, Nemo? Or... No, you've got enough in there for now, at least. And your water dish needs topping up, doesn't it? Where's a good cup or something? Ah, nice clean cup there. Alright. 
if I don't do his water now, I'll forget. So that's not fair on him. There we go. So I want to build another computer, another decent, you know, good working computer. So if my rig in there did go down for whatever reason, I hadn't haven't got a spare part for it. I can slide this one in and still do everything that I need to do. You know, with the, with the um, bare minimum downtime, basically. But I've got a choice. I could do it as a sleeper. Got a few cases that I could use to turn it into a sleeper. Although I'm actually leaning towards this case because I really, really do like this one. It's quite a small case. It's quite old. It's still got this sort of. I'm actually going to try and install Windows with this motherboard and see if it actually does work. Um, but the plan is, I don't need that video card, I've got a better one than that I can use. Um, I'm going to leave the power supply in here because it is a 600 watt. So I'll leave that in there. Uh, I'll just transplant my um, um, other motherboard in here. Excuse me. And uh, I don't know if I could actually fit an SSD in here. Must be somewhere I could put an SSD in here. Hmm. I don't know. I'll think of something. I think you can actually get adapters to go in these um, three and a half inch bays, can't you? Because if I have to, I'll just get one of those. I'll have a look on eBay. I'm pretty certain you can get an adapter that slots in there and takes this bay down to three and a half. <coughs> I don't even think. No. Go to sleep a route. I will actually crawl down here and have a look at those cases better. There's a silver one there, then there's a one of those sitting on top. I've got two of those cases actually. I think I might actually have another one kicking about. Oh, the other one I've got. It's a bit big though. I don't want to do another big case build because I've got that in a big case build. I've got my main computer in a big case build and then I've got that big case there doing nothing. But like I said, I don't want to do another one in a big case. That's the other reason I want to do it in this one. Do a small build. Anyway, I'm just going to take a break for two minutes because nature calls. Okay, that's better. Right. Uh, bedroom, I think. So, an update on the locomotives. Um, I bought seven. Was going to give one as a gift to my stepdad, but he's already got one. So I decided to keep that as well. Um, six of the seven actually work. Uh, well, actually, no. Five of the seven work fine. One of them, which is one of my two 08 diesel shunters, don't work. And I've got a diesel in there that's um, in need of a little bit of repair. It needs one part replaced and that's it. So, let's get a bit of extra light on the subject. Uh, I'm going to start with the ones up here. So, here's the working 08 shunter, there's the non-working one which is missing a vital part, the motor. Um, when I first opened this one up, originally this shell was on here. Um, the brushes for the motor were missing, a few other bits were missing, all the wires were disconnected, so I put that to one side with the intent to actually get a motor and get it working. Got this one working, the chassis working for this one, which had this green body shell on it, which is missing steps off of this side, as you can see they're both missing, and has a big gaping hole in the back where a screw should be, as well as a chunk missing out the bottom there. So what I decided to do, as this chassis was a good working one and that body was in better condition, 
I thought it would make sense to put the good body on the good chassis <laughs> to uh, basically just make a good condition, good working 08 diesel shunter. So that's exactly what I did. Um, yeah, that's just a part pot, not a part, a pot full of uh, some odd spares. The Ginty is working, um, and when we opened it up to service it, we actually found that there's a smoke box in the front here. So if you put a bit of smoke oil down the, the chimney stack there, as this goes around your layout, it will puff smoke out of it. Um, had no idea that was fitted. There was no mention of that in the listing. It was just sold as spares or repairs. So <laughs> I'm chuffed either way. There's my Southern Britannia which is now in good working order. There's my DMU, which is also in good working order. And probably one of my favourites. I've always had a thing for diesel multiple units like that. Don't know why, I've just always liked them. Um, yeah. The Flying Scotsman is working. He just needs a bit of an oil up. And I've got a Class 31. Hey. And then he knocked you flying. Yeah, this one is in need of a bit of repair. The motor does run fine, but it's having connection problems because of a break in this um, motorised bogey. As you can see down the bottom here, where the two wheels are and the gear wheel in the middle, there's like two plastic supports going between them. Um, well, it's missing on that one, which means this wheel is not connecting properly on the track, so... If it does go, it will only go for a short distance before stopping again. But I've been directed to a website that should be able to provide me with a spare plate for that. So, yeah, that's all good. This Intercity, uh, I need to find a gear wheel for the motor. Because it keeps throwing off the one that's on there. Actually, it's not on there. It's in my box of spares. So I didn't lose it. But it keeps throwing the gear off. The other one does work. Little bit noisy, probably could do with an oil up, but it does work. So that's the update for you on the uh, locomotive front. Now I have also invested in some um, spare rolling stock. That goes with that one. Right, so, yeah, I saw sort of hit eBay and I was just randomly looking at, you know, Hornby job lots and whatnot. I found this one, a set of three flatbed trucks, so I thought, great, I'll get those, they can go with those. So I did. And while I was looking, I also found this job lot, which came with the two sort of burgundy and cream coaches the um, double decker car transporter with cars three different guards vans which I say three different that one and that one are actually the same that one's a different one uh, two of these there's another one here but it hasn't got any wheels because I took them off because they were absolutely knackered a cattle van or a cattle wagon and a brake van um, there was a bit of a hiccup with this when I first got the parcel, both of these flatbed trucks were actually missing. <laughs> but I did message the seller and um, they did find them and um, forward them to me. So they got left some nice feedback, some uh, good feedback, positive feedback. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> um, and then I went and found this. The um, 75 tonne brake down crane set. It is there, and it's not an empty box. <laughs> uh, got that for 20 quid. And I was rereading the description of this, and I noticed um, that the seller said he would be listing some more bits and pieces up, you know, over the next sort of coming, I can't remember if he said weeks or months now, but either way, you know, he said he was going to list some more up over time. Um, apparently this had been sitting on 
a layout in a loft for 40 years and the only thing missing is a little chimney which I'm not that antsy about but if it did bug me I can probably find something to put on there but uh, when I went to leave feedback for this well actually I left feedback for that then I decided to see if he had anything else listed he had this listed the um, single decker Hornby car transport which is what that box is for up there and I paid 15 quid for that one plus shipping so I'm quite happy I don't think much of these especially these Hornby cars I mean they're, they're quite plain and basic really aren't they not something that I would want on a layout that's meant to look realistic just for show on something like this yeah I'll, I'll use them for that I have to say I do like these ones but there only seems to be two different cars this one actually I believe is an HA Viva just looking at that front and the side I'm pretty certain that is an HA Viva um, and then there's a couple of Austin 1100s on the bottom deck if you're wondering how you get to them this deck, the middle deck, raises up it took me about three days to figure out how to get into there <laughs> right, and also we're on a subject the loop is actually quite big now. Um, I wanted to get a rough idea on how big the main loop was actually going to be on an 8x4 piece of ply, an 8 foot by 4 foot piece of ply, which is what I'm going to make the, you know, the base for the layout from. Um, so I got my tape measure and I measured 8 foot from that end of my loop to there and then I basically extended it out and I did the same width wise and then just added the track where I needed and it's about two inches shorter than eight foot and actually about two inches narrower than four foot so this loop is pretty much the size I'm gonna have well for the main circuit I suppose I could fit another one in there if I wanted to and still have room to play around because uh, in the middle, I'm going to split the middle into two halves, that's the plan. Or maybe, I don't know yet, depends how the the Heritage Railway Yard actually pans out. But I'm at least going to put the Heritage Railway area, you know, with all the buildings and trains and things all up there. Visitor car park, etc. Little station there. So I'll probably have two stations on one side, maybe. It's still in the plans. I'm just running ideas through my head at the minute. And the village, or the town, whatever you want to call it, up the other end. I haven't decided which end is going to be which yet. I've just decided that, you know, it's at least going to be a 50-50 split. Again, it depends on really how much room I decide to take up for the heritage centre. I might have enough space down this side to put a few more perhaps homes or something up there. We'll, uh, we'll see. Well I suppose the other way I could do it, I could do it in half and half this way couldn't I? So one half town, one half heritage, I don't know. That might be a bit too much for the heritage layout though. Now my intent was never to go super sized or have too much track laying down. I want enough track so enough sidings and the more I think about it the more I'm actually thinking I'm going to go for uh, two loops at least and I will go for DCC eventually I have already decided on that one so I will go digital but I'm also going to leave the analog power track in on the loop because you cannot run analog trains on a DCC layout they just sit there and hum um, so if I wanted to I actually thought if I leave that there all I've got to do is plug an analog controller into it and I can you know if I buy a locomotive that's not DCC ready I, at least I can test it on the layout it shouldn't interfere with um, DCC as so long as I only use one at a time you know one or the other at a time not both together I think if I used it, accidentally, you know, had DC on with DCC, then that might cause some problems. But uh, 
maybe what I could do is have that connected to a switch over switch you know like a rocker switch um, a three-way switch whatever you want to call it so middle would be off and then I click it one way for DC and then the other way for DCC that way there's no risk of me actually um, accidentally like leaving that on and then going to turn DCC on and perhaps uh, killing something in the process I actually I prefer that idea I think I will do that you see because my stepdad also has uh, a controller like that that he uses for testing on um, non-DCC locomotives that he gets because he actually recently bought another 08 diesel he bought a Backman one which is absolutely beautiful looking the detail is insane on the Backman one you know I mean Hornby one has detail you can see all the you know the vents and the rivets and things but Backman seem to add a bit more paint and highlight a lot more detail I mean everything is just the same colour on this we've got the British Rail sticker and the locomotive number there and that's about it some grey buffers you know and a yellow nose <laughs> typical of British Rail back then actually I think that's British Rail is that British Rail green? I don't know I'm still learning I'm pretty certain my stepdad's got an identical one to this actually identical body because I recognise that little logo there yeah well, I am really looking forward to actually getting that base set up in there and uh, you know have something a bit more permanent than this on the floor because I keep it keeps getting knocked and believe it or not out of all those joints in this loop that's the only one that keeps separating for some reason although it's probably because it's quite loose fitting so I've either got to change the fish plate so I might change that curve because I think that curve has actually been the issue more than anything it's not like I haven't got enough curves in the box but I've actually uh, it's actually been pushed that way a bit more and all isn't it it needs to come towards me a bit there we go that's better that's closed up usually you can see the track sort of kinks there but that shouldn't affect the low code going around oh, you hoop. right but at the moment because we haven't got a bloody van although he has ordered all the parts for us to completely recondition the brakes um, but at the moment I can't get the board anyway but that's not a problem really because I'm not ready to put the base in this corner anyway so <sighs> I need to measure this actually uh, I think I'll do that tomorrow I've got to go to mum's to give her a hand doing a dump run then I think I'm going to come back here and uh, start measuring this up and drawing a quick plan out on some paper so we can uh what well, so well so i can work out the heights and things I'm not going any higher than that that's the maximum height uh i don't know what i'll do with the tv cabinet i suppose i could put it on facebook marketplace free i don't want anything for it um <clears throat> i don't know if there's any charities in town that will actually take those anymore uh, Yeah, and yeah, and the custom one to go in there as well. But I am definitely going to have to move these that way. I'm not looking forward to that because I know as soon as I move these, all those cars are going to go flying. So it's either the choice of leave them there and just try to put them all back when I've moved them, or take them all off and move it. I don't know. I think I might. I might chance it. I might get lucky and only the front ones like roll off <laughs> if I'm lucky but yeah I need to get this side sorted before I can clear this side 
to start putting the base up. In fact, what I could do, that's clear, I don't need the base to do that, I just need to put, well I suppose, not even an 8 foot batten, I could just put a batten on the wall where I need the hinge. Um, that might be the easiest option actually, instead of trying to piss around with an 8 foot long batten. I could probably put like four hinges on there, you know, something like a quarter of a foot long or something, just long enough so I can put two screws in it to screw it to the wall and uh, the hinge on, that's it. We've got shed loads of hinges down at the, um, in my stepdad's workshop, thankfully, <laughs> yeah, anyway. One last thing I want to show you, I've been working in the bathroom as well. Got a mirror up in a much better location. Got rid of my old one. And a bathroom cabinet. Which has just got my medications and a few other bits and bobs in it. Uh, so all that's left to do in here is uh, just clean the bathroom basically. I'm not going to show you that because it's not nice. Well. It's not the worst thing out there, but it's still not pretty. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a heck of a lot dirtier than that. But, uh, it is getting cleaned. That is my aim before New Year's, to actually get that cleaned, and the kitchen at least. Because they seem to be the two rooms I actually neglect the most. I've got his tray to do as well. That needs a clean. <sighs> I just realised I've still got all these um, panels there for shelving. Oh, I wonder what I was going to do with those. I was going to cut them down. I was going to put them up the wall. Uh, pardon me, over there. Because I've got loads of those panels left. Because uh, that's what I cut up from an old wardrobe. A couple of old wardrobes, actually, to uh, use as shelving in the outside closet. And I've, I'm done with that project. And I've got about half a dozen of these panels left over. Uh, I'm probably going to need like two thirds down of that, so I could cheat and take them all back down to mum's and just use the table saw or the chopped saw to cut them, or I can just do them by hand. But anyway, I think I'm rambling on a bit. I tried to think how long this video is by now, so uh, I'm going to end it here, I think. So, thanks a lot for watching. I do hope you'll uh, stay tuned for my journey with model railways. <laughs> I'm not very artistic, so that might be fun to watch, you know, watching me try to do static grass and whatnot. I've never been that arti um, artistic. <laughs> so if you want a giggle, that might be worth watching just for that. Anywho, thanks for watching. I will talk to you all again in the next video. Bye.